All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today for this beautiful necklace. I'm going to tippy toe so that you can see that I am wearing three right now. And I wrote all the measurements down on a piece of paper. You get that. And I'll be telling you some notes. Or you can just stay put because then I know where the camera is going to be and I can hold it up. And we are going to talk about straight stringing. Now, the cord that I'm using is nylon. And I'm going to show you our nylon sizer that we've made in case you want to also make one at home. This is the most practical thing you could imagine having. It is, Miss Gail, do you have the nylon sizer? I'm going to show and tell that to everyone. It's there. Okay. Somewhere. Well, we're going to look for our nylon sizer. We are in a little bit of a... Um, a change as we decided just last night that we're going to continue the bead gallery through the end of the year in this format where we're going to be teaching online and still doing online sales even though not we're not reopening to the public as we did before so I hope you guys can be patient because today is like our first day committing to that so we're actually changing the whole layout of the store yes it was just that we had a little staff meeting last night and decided that this COVID really has been a very interesting uh, time for all of us, I'm sure. So beading has been very stress relieving and being creative. Actually, having this venue of creativity has been really amazing and using that skills for other, other ways. All right. So this is so funny. I'm sorry, you guys. We seem to have lost our nylon sampler shooter. We do have two others, Jason. So maybe if you can maybe find, yeah, we don't know where anything is anymore. We are not a retail bead store anymore. Isn't that interesting? For me, after 22 years to finally feel like now we're going through a change. I guess the store is going through puberty. All right. I'm going to settle myself and figure out where everything is in the store today. And we have one. Okay, here it is. So this is a thread sampler and it has nylon cords on it. So every time we do a project and we have an extra nylon cord, how's that? We are putting it on this. So we have a card, it has the name of the string. So nice size two, size four, size six. Okay, hang on one second. I'm going to turn this off. Okay. And show you that we have it from the thinnest to the thickest. Here's two right here. So the way that the numbers work is that the higher the number, the thicker the cord. The lower the number, the thinner the cord. <clears throat> This one right here is on a size six. So a size six is equivalent to about a 0 0.019. So that is like a 20, maybe a 22 gauge wire. So sometimes it's good to know what the wire gauge that fits through it. And if you wanted to get a cord, we can tell you, oh, that's equivalent to this size. So then you don't end up buying too many different cords that you don't need, right? So to string it, there is a needle on the end of this cord that's twisted on. Let me see if I can show you right here. And then you're going to be pulling the needle that's twisted, so it's one piece of wire, through the bead. Okay. Then you're going to string in all the beads. And then we're going to be tying a knot at the back side. Now, because you're going to be stringing from left to right and not center out, you have to know where your center is before you start, okay? So, this is a 24-inch necklace. 24-inch necklace, necklaces generally will fit over your head very nicely. 23 is a bit tight. It starts pulling at your face a little bit when you tug it down. So, I would say 24 is like the shortest I usually wear. So, that would be this one here. Then I have this tiger eye one as a sample. The tiger eye necklace is 29 inches, and this one is 32. 
So if you want to wear them layered, let me take off the tiger eye so you can see. If you want to wear them layered, it's kind of nice to have about two to three inches difference, okay? So this is the 26, this is a 32, and this is a 29. So there's three inches between these two and three inches between the next two. So there you go, there you have it. When I do shorter necklaces, I will do a two inch difference, like I'll do a 15, 17 maybe, or 16 and an 18. But when it gets to be longer, it's nicer if you add that extra inch to allow for like a curve, a larger bead, and so they're not so close to each other like so. So if you do need any more measurements or anything, you're welcome to go into the chat room and let me know. Actually, I'm gonna go to the chat room and that way I can see. So cords are opposite of wire. Yes, the cords are, okay. Twisted against the opposite direction of the wire. Okay, ask any questions in the chat and I will read it as we go because now I'm caught up to that. So when you're doing a necklace and you're stringing left to right, not middle out, if I figure like this necklace was too long and I want, or maybe, maybe I want the middle a little bit shifted, the only way to fix it is you have to string from both sides. So let's say this necklace is too short and I have to add two inches to both sides, okay? Let me repeat that because this is kind of a trick. Let's say this necklace is too short and I decide I want to add two inches to both sides. You can't. And do you know why? Nancy, do you know why you can't add two inches to both sides? <laughs> because there's only a needle on one side of this cord. Aha! <laughs> I see you. You're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> this side does not have a needle. So it's kind of a futile thing to keep poking out a bead that it won't go through. Okay, so no needle on one side and needle on the other. So because that's the case, you have to have an idea of what you're doing before you start. Now, if you have a big whole bead, don't worry. You can do this as, you know, you can just redo it easily or just add. But if your beads are tight, because I like the cord to be the thickest cord that can fit in the bead. So I sized it and I tried every size. The six was the tightest. And so I knew that I wanted 24 inches. You can always take off if you want it shorter, but you can't add on easily, okay? So the trick is 24 inches minus your center. So my center was about two inches. So 24 minus two is 22 inches. So I had to string this much beads on either side to total 22 inches. Divided by two is 11. So it goes 11 inches, 11 inches, and two inches. So I, then I knew it would make 24. So you have to do a little bit of math, a little bit of planning before you do your layout. It does help. It really does when you want a center focal. Now, if you're not doing a center focal and you're just stringing, you don't have to think about anything I just said. Only if you want a focal and only if you're using a cord that has a needle on one side. If you string this on soft flex, which is a beading cable, and it is a stiff stainless steel cable wrapped in plastic, you don't have to do that. The soft flex you can poke from both ends easily, no problem, all right? So it's just when you're using this nylon cord, you have to think in advance. Now, you string it, you have this project, and now we're almost done. Yes, we are almost done. You have two options at this point. You're gonna tie it and you're gonna burn it at the knot, or you tie it and you sear it off at the knot. Well, actually, there's three options. You tie it and you put glue on the knot. But I'm not gonna use glue today. I'm gonna use fire because this is a meltable string and I love that it melts. So I'm probably gonna hide under the table and do it because the air con is blowing. So that's gonna move my flame all over the place. And when it's going like that, didn't you see that? It's really hard to control that. So I think I'm gonna um, either have Jason try to, well, he can't block all this air. So maybe we'll crouch under the table and have him follow us. We'll see, we'll see, let's get there first. Let's tie the knot. Now, this is not a tricky knot. This is a plain old knot. And I have to see if I like the length of this necklace because I was a little tricky. I had my friend Gail pre-string it to me and I told her to make it a little longer so I could take it off if I wanted it shorter. I think I do. So I'm gonna grab a ruler. 
a yardstick so that I can see how long this is. Then, yes, Mike, this is exactly where a beadboard would come in handy. As in, she's coming to the rescue to show you what a beadboard is. Yes, in our craziness today, it didn't even occur to me to put it on a beadboard. Ms. Allison, please introduce the beadboard to them and tell them what's so awesome about that. The beadboard is good. When you're designing your project, you can lay it all out. It has little markings to see how long your necklace is going to be. And there's little slots for you to put all your beads that you're using all in one spot. And you can even do multiple ones because there's multiple grooves. And you can do bracelets in the center strip you have three strips if you want to do a multi-strand bracelet or a single bracelet it's only 15 bucks so if you like that you have pick up in store only though oh yeah pick up in store <laughs> only don't forget all right so here i am i am back i'm going to i'm going to tie my beads together and the knot we're going to do is a square knot so mr jason do you think if possible you could pick up the camera and aim mm -hmm. down for the knot yep. tying part because I realize that I cannot tie my knot midair. Okay, so let's stay and we find a nice tray. This is how you tie your square knot. And I don't want to waste thread, so I'm going to slide all my beads to one side because no sense you waste your thread. Your needle side, you need a needle, so do not cut the side with the needle off. Oh, Clarine said, what's the suggested millimeter size difference between the center beads and the rest of the beads? Miss Clarine, guess what? I wrote that down and I made a little, little chart thingy to talk to you guys about that. Okay, so hang on. And it is a good idea to pre-string, I mean, to pre-pull your cord and stretch it a little bit before you use it. And if I didn't do that, then you can always do it right now. Okay, let's tie your knot. This is not a special knot. This is the kind of knot that's called a square knot. Put your thread over and you tie it like so. And then I'm gonna tie another one. This, the second knot though can be a surgeon's knot where you go through two times. So if you've done stretchy cord, this is pretty much the stretchy cord ending. And I didn't pull out all the slack of the necklace because I didn't want the necklace to be super tight and kinky. So when I did tie my knot, when I tied my first knot, I did not take the ends and just yank all the tension out. I did keep it so it's nice and smooth, okay? You will know exactly what I mean the first time you do that because when I tied my first necklace so tight, I put it on, it was making kinks like this all over because there was no slack in the thread. But, all right, so the second knot you can pull really tight. That's the surgeon's knot. Now I'm gonna cut and burn it. Allison's approaching me with the shield, the air shield. Awesome. So cut and cut. Oh, you know what I'll do for the demonstration? I'll do one of each kind. I'll do the thread zapper on one and then a lighter on the other, okay? So this is the thread zap. If you wanna cut your thread, oh, I'll show you what else you can do. So you're gonna take it first and you're gonna just touch, 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 touch until it comes down. You can see the fire coming out. And then sometimes you can take the side of the plastic to push it down because that kind of cools off the knot. So can you see that that thread is now gone. Very handy. The last time I did the demo with the lighter, I burned myself because the air blew the flame onto my finger. I was like, oh, not good. All right, let's give this a shot. So you can use the side of the flame to burn it down. And if you burn it too far and you burn your knot off, you have to start again. So try not to do that. There's no tips I can give you to fix that. Then <laughs> touch that knot tap it down. I use the side of the lighter where it's cooler to tap it down and then my project is done. Thanks for blocking the wind guys. So helpful. Now this is this cord. Ah, this is a good one. When you cut this cord, it starts to fray. Look, can you see that? 
it is always going to do that. So you have two choices. This is where you can burn it down and singe it, or that's where I burned myself last time. So I'm not going to do that today. <laughs> There's nothing like burning yourself in front of a live audience. <laughs> in this one, you turn on this thread zap and cut through the cord. And because it's singeing it right there, it can't unravel. How is that? If you like that, please clap. Clap from wherever you are. And I'll pretend I can hear you. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> okay, so the necklace is done and I would love to hear some feedback or questions because then I'm gonna talk about a little bit some design tips next. But because that was the whole technique, I don't think I'll be revisiting it. So I would love any questions right now. You can unmute yourself. You can just put it in the, in the chat box. And I'm going to wait a little bit to see if there's any questions and then talk about some other stuff. Questions about the thread, questions about the knot that I made. I'm ready for you. My necklace is so cute, you guys. I love it. This one is Rude Raksha. It's five millimeters. So cute. Can't wait to put it on. Oh, look how cute that is. Okay, so honestly, these aren't all my necklaces. This one is Alison's. I'm going to have to return this to her. Okay. I will put this back on Allison. Allison, could you wear this on your chest to show everybody how nice this is? So hers is 32 inches. Not nice. We do have a question. It says, what do you think if I use a number four thread for pearl and larger hole mala beads? A number four thread is equivalent to like a 26 gauge wire, yeah, Jay? Mm -hmm. So that is a little bit on the thin side. So what you want to do instead of just using a number four in case that's all you have is you take your thread hmm. Here. sizer. Found it. Ah. And I start with the thinnest and I work my way up from a two to a four to a six to an eight. And then I stop when the thread fits. So it should fit snug not tight because you don't want the bead dragging on the thread over and over weakening the thread okay you want to pick it where it's not loose and loosey-goosey and swimming in the bead either now let's say you have a problem and you've picked small hole beads and big hole beads right so what you want to do in that situation is you either drill out some of the small hole beads if there's just a few to match the rest of the big hole beads or you can use a thinner thread but when you get to the big hole beads, you may want to shore it up by tying a knot on either side. The knot may slide through the bead hole if the thread is thin, so you can put a spacer. But it will, I mean, using a thin thread in large hole beads is never like a good, good idea because it's never strong enough as much as using a thick thread that matches the bead hole size and there's less friction that weakens the thread. So I would say, please try to use the thickest thread that fits, okay? And if you don't have a sizer, what you can do is we is start beading. And then we, if you, want a, if you want a sample of every single size in one of our favorite colors, you will use those threads. So I'm not saying buy the thread to make a sampler, buy the thread so that you can use them in every project. This is, uh, you can wear this in water, you can wash it, it will last years and years. All the projects I've been wearing for me 20 years on this cord, I still have them and they're fine. I don't think I've ever broken this cord maybe like once or twice because I had a citrine that had a really rough hole. So that broke that bracelet over and over. So I drilled the hole on and cleaned it up. Okay. Then um, Anne asked, she has a thread zap, but it doesn't work anymore. It works on batteries. So what I do is I don't use regular batteries. I use rechargeables. When you use a rechargeable, that means that every time you're about to use it, if you haven't used it in a week or two weeks, put a new one in, a new recharge or new recharger, because then it will heat up fast. I mean, there's nothing better than when you touch that button and it turns red, like hot, and you can just sear your project right away. As the battery gets weaker, it takes a little longer and longer. And this is a nice part, look. When this gets junky, you just buy another one. I think it's what, two for $5 or something? It's like a five or $6 replacement. But yeah, so that, um, 
it's broken, if you try changing it first and then. So if it's not heating up, let us know and then we can help you with that. All righty. What do we have next? What kind of wood bead did I use? Holly, look, I brought all this wood to show you <laughs> because I wanted to tell you like all the different kinds of options on what you can use to make this project. So let me get to that next. So I am wearing on mine, this is like a little mini Rudraksha, okay? This is a five millimeter Rudraksha and it is 16 it was a 16 inch 18 inch strand and i knew i wanted it to get to 24 inches so i knew that i had to put a bead in between each one in order to get to a 24 inch length okay so that is something that you have to consider is how many spacer beads you have to put in in order to make it longer should your original length not be long enough to get over your head like Allison's necklace, she has no spacers in between hers. She just did full wood and then she just put her pearls, which I love. I was gonna do that, but I only had, I didn't have enough Rudraksha. And I was like, should I buy another strand? I was like, let me see if I can make it work. So I just put some spacers. I'm gonna hold that up so you can see the spacers in between that I used to stretch this project out. So cute, right? Now the question is, why do I use nylon versus soft flex? That is a perfect question. The nylon thread is very soft. It's very flexible. So when you wanna wear something that drapes and moves, you wanna do it on a thread. So then I use nylon. Why nylon over silk? Because I use silk for years and after five years, people kept touching the samples or trying them on and I noticed that some of the, the, those samples would break and I was like, hey. So, and then we couldn't wash it because when silk gets wet, that it, 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 um, it doesn't retract and come back, okay? When the nylon gets wet, if you wanna wash it, it comes back to its normal length that it started off as very little stretch on that. So you can get it wet, so awesome. Okay, this one. So I'm gonna now start talking about the different sizes. Is the stiffy? Oh. I didn't finish the question. So, yeah, there is a so stiffy. Soft flex is stiffer. It is a stainless steel cable encased in plastic. Now, if you're not familiar with soft flex, it's a wonderful cable. I have, I'm wearing it right now. This is it right here. So it does make nice circles, right? And then you can put clasps, crimps, wire protectors on your project. And so soft flex is really nice. So what, the way soft flex is made is you have to think really, really fine, fine extruded strands of stainless steel. And then they take some and they twist it and they encase it in plastic. See, sticky. So it is waterproof. It is, does not stretch at all because it's stainless steel. It's really strong, but it's stiff. So if you want a necklace that sits round on your neck, I tell people, use soft necks. It'll stay rounded on your neck. If you want something that drops to like a U shape or is more like, like when you're wrapping it around your wrist, if you want it to wrap, then you want to use, oh, isn't that cute as a wrap bracelet? If you put a clasp, we can, oh, you guys, we should put a clasp on this and then we can wear these as wrap bracelets too. Ah, side note. If you want to do it as a wrap bracelet, though, you have to take your wrist and go, okay, so my wrist is six inches. A 24-inch necklace is perfect because I can wrap it four times. But you do not want to make a 22-inch necklace and wear it as a wrap bracelet if you have a six-inch wrist because then you're going to have this place where it's either too short by two inches or too long. You know what I mean? If you don't know what I mean, then um, let me know. That, that could be another design class. So you have to put some thought into the length. But because it doesn't have to get over your head when you put a clasp, it can be any length. And then you can work two times around, three times around. This one has tiger eye. And I'm now gonna talk about sizes, Miss Clarine, sizes and of the beads. Okay. The Rudraksha baby one that I made right now is five millimeters with eight millimeter pearls. Let me get my calipers. So it's five millimeter Rudraksha with eight millimeter pearls.
8.5 millimeter pearls. So basically my pearls are three millimeters bigger than this. I like that. I like that size difference. Now, this necklace is eight millimeter Rudraksha. Eight millimeter Rudraksha with 12 and 13 millimeter pearls. So that's a five millimeter difference. But I think it looks really nice. So the pearl size is super different, but then I can wear one short. And then if I make the other necklace a little bit longer, oh, that'd be so nice to wear layered, right? I think so. I think that'd be a really great layered necklace. Oh, I gotta make some jewelry. Okay. Then this tiger eye is eight millimeter jet. So that's the fossilized wood. And the tiger eye is 12 millimeters. And then I'll show you one more. That is eight millimeter beads with 10 to 11 millimeters. So as you can see, eight millimeter necklace beads are perfect. It seems to go with a lot of stuff because Allison's necklace, these two are done with eight millimeters. My Rudraksha is eight millimeters. I know it looks a little smaller because the beads are worn down, but it is eight. And I would say eight millimeters is kind of a winning size to put with different sizes. So if you're like, I don't know what to get, seven, eight, nine millimeters for your wood portion is awesome. Now, here's the non-spacer version. Here is a spacer version. So there's spacers in between. The spacers on the black one are larger. The spacers on this one are small. As long as you can get it onto your cording, that's all that counts. All right, I'm ready for any other design questions. And I took the really I took some really nice pictures to guide to send you guys if you want to make any of these and we send you a kit I did full photo layouts I wonder if I can show you I can't because my phone is filming me and my computer is doing the feedback I'll okay if you guys are buying a kit I'll send you a photo of what the necklace layout is you can just copy it um, if you want a kit Allison put some pearls together. I busted out my new pearls. All right. Is there any questions as far as this necklace goes? Because I'm going to stop recording and then we can talk about any other questions you guys have about kits, pricing, beads, or whatever. But I'm going to stop the recording if that's and if, you, if there's no more questions about how to make this necklace or how to design it. Did you show the blue Bombucha pearls? Bombucha. No, I'm going to show them next. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to stop the recording. So everybody stay. Is it recommended beads for the main part of the necklace wood? Okay. So the reason why we used wood, because wood is the most cost effective, <clears throat> meaning if you want to save, if you want to be economical and you want to spend $300 on your pearls, $500 on your pearls, it's kind of hard sometimes for us to tell a customer, Oh, now for the rest of the necklace, because that's only like seven beads, right? And you're at 300. The rest of the necklace, you need 22 more inches. It can get into the thousands. So by using wood, a wood strand can sometimes add $20, $40 onto a necklace, and it still looks good. And I like the idea of like two very natural, natural things together. So you have the wood and the pearl. But Jason, please bring these in so these are gemstone samples so if you want to use gems we what we have done was we figured out what gems we have that are not too pricey so like this brown agate strand i think is what oh we, we have, yeah something it 16 really is. for a whole strand and then you can we put tiger eye with this one so that was an awesome kit that we had we sold all of that one a while back this one is it's like phantom or it's um is this the Lodalite? And then we put the Amazonite carved beads. You can use gems, but yeah, we were just trying to be economical when we decided to put wood with the Tahitian pearls. Just Allison really likes that earthy 
I know. It is Malka to Makai, right? From mountain to ocean. So you have the wood all the way to the pearl, which is just amazing. Another question, what the length of the three long layered necklaces are? Twenty six, twenty nine, and thirty two. Those were the three I, were, I was wearing. But then I also had a twenty seven inch and a twenty four inch. So pretty much you can do it. Is the record? Can you use lava beads? Of course, you can use lava beads. It does get a little bit heavier though with the lava bead, um, but you definitely can. For sure. It's a good exfoliator for your neck. <laughs> Jason said it's a good exfoliator for your neck. I know. I was a little bit wary about when I when I'm when I'm doing a heavier necklace, I don't like my beads to be pokey. Um, I like them to be smooth and the wood does wear really nicely. Okay. I think that is all the questions. So thank you so much. I really enjoy talking about these necklaces with you. So hang on one second and I'll be right back.